Hi, I'm Sarah Tilly from Curious Maths. I'm a primary maths consultant based in London and I've been in education for over 20 years. Now this is a really tricky time in education and um, most of us are now teaching our children on an online platform, um, which is new actually to many of us. And recently quite a few teachers have got in contact with me and asked me if I've got any ideas for any quick, easy to play maths games that sort of break up the learning a little bit um, where the children can get more involved and have a bit of fun. And so what I've done is I put a video together of 10 games that I think would work really well online. I've tried out most of them myself online, so I know they work. Um, just to add at this point, of course, all these games would be great in a primary classroom anyway, or if you're a parent, um, really great to play at home. Um, but this video, I've selected ones that I think would work with the interactivity and I've given a suggestion, a few suggestions actually, about the types of questions you might ask if you play the game. I really hope you find it useful. So before we look at the games, I just want to mention that I tried to select games that could be adapted to as many year groups as possible. So what you'll notice is with some of the suggestions or the sample questions I give, they might jump around a little bit from an easy question to a hard question, one about geometry, then one about number. But really, um, the purpose of me doing that is just to show you how they can be adapted and the wide range of questions that you can ask. So you'll just need to adapt as appropriate for your children and your class. Game one is last unique. The aim of this game is to be the person who chooses the lowest but unique number. So children choose a number between one and 20 and do make them record it as proof that they're not cheating. Children stand up and then you count back slowly from 20 and children must sit down when their number is called. Now for some numbers, many children might sit down but any child who sits down on their own is the current champion. Keep going until you get to one child left and that winner is the child with the lowest unique number. It's really great for reasoning and problem solving and making decisions and listening and learning and learning from what you're finding out. It's a great game. Number two, estimation station. And this is one of my go-to activities for online learning because it's so varied, there's so much you can do. So on the screen, there's a variety of different suggestions that you could use for estimation station. Um, I like to concentrate on measure quite a lot. Uh, I find it really useful um, for the real life links. I often use my visualizer as well. So the item that the children have estimated, we can actually measure, that tends to work really well. Um, but it's, it's really good and um, keeps the children entertained and interested and really great for getting them to learn from trial improvement and um, to make real life links and to show understanding and measure. Number three, the maths memory game. Now this certainly isn't a new game, it's just an old favourite with a maths slant and I can remember playing this in primary school. I think this game is really useful to break up some learning that you've been doing. It gets children to use their brain in a different way, gets them to focus, gets them to be quiet. Um, it's, it's a really nice thing to include with online learning. So the instructions, if you're not familiar with it, are on the screen. And I've added a few little twists to it, a few little ideas um, of how you can extend it a little bit further. It's just really good for observational skills, great for practicing the working memory, getting them using it. Um, and just an all-around great game. So here's an example of one I've made up. There's so much more you could put in there. Um, I was a bit limited with the resources that I had in my office, um, but I was thinking about 3D shapes maybe, protractors, compasses, something to do with fractions. Uh, there's, there's just so much you can do. So give it a go. It's a really great game to play online. Game four, Einstein Says. So it's a bit similar to Simon Says in name only, um, but it's a great maths game. So children stand up and you give them a statement beginning with Einstein Says, and that statement will be correct or incorrect. Now, if it's correct, the children need to stay standing, and if it's incorrect, they need to sit down. And you give them a set amount of time to make the decision, because if their decision is wrong, they are out, and the winner is going to be the last player left in the game. Now, for those children who are out, uh, they can definitely get involved because they can be preparing questions to pose. They have to know the right answer. Um, but this is such a fun game. It's a really good way of revising concepts um, and getting children to contribute and be part of it. So I've just put on the screen some examples of the types of questions you could ask. So they all start with Einstein says. And as you can see, there's some which are correct and some which are incorrect. 
It gets a really good way to get discussion going, um, children agreeing and disagreeing, and actually you can unpick any of the statements in any more detail that you need. Number five, once upon a math story. And this is a lovely idea where as a class you write a math story together with each child adding a sentence or a couple of sentences to the story to make it make sense. Now your input in this story is you're gonna flash up either a number or some maths vocabulary and this has to be included when the next child speaks. This has to be part of the story. And on the screen that you can see I've put a range of different suggestions for the types of things you can do. So this isn't a competitive game, it's a team game. Um, but what it might be worth doing is brainstorming real life links before you start playing the game because being put on the spot can be quite difficult for both children and adults. Um, but it's great for communicating mathematically. Um, and here are some real life links that you could use. I've just listed a few for your brainstorming. Game number six, a maths scavenger hunt. And scavenger hunts have been uh, really popular online games in the last year, so I've just adapted it with a maths focus. So if you're playing this scavenger hunt as a whole class, then you might want to send groups at a time because it can get quite crazy. Um, and also those children who aren't dashing away to find something can brainstorm ideas of what they, they would choose. Or you could even tell them what the next find me might be and they can brainstorm ideas. And on the screen I've got a, some suggested ideas um, that link to maths that they could go and search. Um, and I think you can be really creative with this and children really enjoy it. Number seven. 13 or 21. Same game, just different end numbers. This is a strategy game and lots of children know it, so it'll be really easy to adapt online. The idea of the game is that you can either add one, two or three to the existing number and it's your choice. And the idea is you either want to say the number 13 if you win, if that's the rules you've decided on, or not say the number 13 if that puts you out of the game. And there's an example on the screen of how it works, but you can open, organise this really nicely over a week, have a, um, a game a day and the winner stays on. And it's really good for children making decisions, um, really good for getting everybody involved. It's such a fun game. Number eight, maths artists in residence. Now, I've used this activity loads of times in the classroom, so I'm pretty sure it will translate really well onto an online platform. So the idea is that children create a maths picture based on a series of instructions that you give them. And you could use this activity as a screen break. Um, you could use this activity over the week so that actually by the end of the week, they've got these wonderful maths masterpieces. I think it's better not rushed. So it's a really good way to revise maths concepts and maths vocabulary, make real life links. Um, it's, and lots of children enjoy doing it. It's a nice, quiet activity. So I put some ideas on the screen for you to look at. Number nine, last number standing. And the aim of the game is to be just that, the last player standing. So children need to write a number down based on one rule that you decide to give them. For example, their number must be in between 75 and 500. And once they've written their number down, they stand up and hold up their numbers for everyone else to see on your instruction. And you read out one rule at a time. Children have to listen to the rule and decide whether their number follows that rule. And if it doesn't, they need to sit down. And then they can help you with checking that all the people who are standing up have got the, the right answer. So this is great for revising a variety of different concepts, making decisions um, and things like that. So here are some ideas for rules. I think you want to vary the type of sentences you say. So sometimes you might say the number must be odd. And another time you might say the number must not be prime, uh, just to give them a chance to deepen their thinking really about, about their decision making. But there's lots of different things you can do and there's some ideas on the screen. Game number 10, spoof. I like to finish with my favourite ones. So this game actually originated in bars and pubs um, with lots of gambling involved and drinks. Um, but I have taken all that bit out and I couldn't resist to share it because it's such a good game for, for, math, for maths. So every child will have, need to have three things that they can fit in their hand, coins, counters, pasta, anything they can fit in their hand easily. So the idea of the game is that children get a choice to either put one, two or three items in their hand. And... Everybody does that who's involved in the game. And then the aim of the game is to correctly estimate 
or be closest to how many items in total are actually hidden in all the players' hands. So it's really good fun because you get a really good opportunity to talk about what's a good estimate. Um, you can't really predict what's in everybody's hand, um, but children get a lot of joy out of getting a close answer and especially getting the right answer. So this game um, you could play in small groups and you could have a, a group playing a day and the winner stays on. But it, it's just really good for decision making, reasoning and problem solving. Um, great for mental calculation. Um, it's a fantastic game. I, I thoroughly recommend it. So that's it. My 10 great maths games for online learning. I hope you find it useful. Please like and subscribe to my channel and head over to my Curious Maths page on Facebook for more primary maths fun. Thanks very much for watching.